Reaction videos are some of the most popular content on YouTube these days, and they're super easy to make and totally free. So today I'm gonna show you how. So you know what? Let's get to it! OBS Studio is the tool we're gonna use to create our reaction videos. If you're not familiar with OBS Studio, it's a live streaming and recording tool that's open source and totally free. It's available for Windows, Mac, and Linux, and there is a link in the description so you can download it, install it, and check it out for yourself. I would definitely recommend that you do that so you can have it on your machine and follow along with me as that is the best way to learn. Once you have it installed, let's jump in and I'll give you a brief overview of how it works. This is what you're going to see the first time that you open up OBS, and I hate this look, so I'm just gonna change it and when I do, you're gonna see that it looks exactly the same as all the other tutorials that you may find if you go seek in any tutorials on OBS. So that's the original interface. That's the one I'm used to, that's the one I like, but I did show you what it's gonna look like when you first boot up. All we have to do now is go over what each of these pieces are. So this area right here is your preview screen. So everything that would be recorded or live stream broadcast is gonna be in this screen right here this black box over here on the left you have scenes you can pop these boxes out and move them wherever you like if you wanted to makes it very easy to configure this in a way that makes sense for you now obs is done by creating different scenes and in each scene you can have multiple sources. Sources are camera devices, microphone devices, videos, images, pretty much anything that you can think of can be a source in a scene. Audio mixer is where all of your audio devices will be listed and you can adjust the volume and different aspects of your audio right here. Scene transitions give you the ability to change from one scene to another and put a nifty transition in here like a slide or a fade or something like that. And then over here you have a box with your controls so you can stream with this obviously. You can record, it even has a virtual camera so if you wanted to output this image right here to anything else, you could do that. Studio mode allows you to set up two different sequences. So basically the right hand side is what is being broadcast or recorded. The left hand side you can set up different aspects of your scene and then you can click this transition button and you'll be able to actually move from this scene being pre-scene to being live. That's basically how studio mode works. Then you have all of your settings which I'll cover later when we set up our recordings and of course you can exit. So those are the main features that you're going to run into here that you need to understand. You can make this preview screen bigger or smaller by mousing over in this area, holding the space bar and using the wheel on your mouse to zoom in and out. Up here you have the usual file and edit and view. Docs allow you to use plugins and things like that that can create different aspects that you can open up and dock in different locations. You can set up different profiles. So I have a 4K recording profile. I have my gaming live stream all kinds of different stuff. It's very simple to create a new profile if you're going to do reaction videos for multiple channels or something like that. You can create multiple channels. In your profile, that saves your settings right in here. In your scene collection, does the exact same thing where you could create all kinds of different profiles, but in the scene collection profile, that's going to be saved all of your scenes, your sources, your audio mixes and your transitions. So your profile is your settings and your scene collection is all of this stuff. So you can save multiple different ones and use them as you see fit. Tools just adds extra features which you can use with plugins and all kinds of different things like that. None of this is going to be anything you're really gonna need to cover for a basics video, but it's nice to know what it does and what it is. You also have this bar right here which when you load sources in here, it's going to give you different options for filters and properties. And if you're gonna load in like a video source, you're gonna be able to play it and pause it right from here. So that is what that bar is. That's the basic UI. It might look a little complicated, but it is very simple as you're going to see when I show you how to set it up. Now we know what each section of the software is, 
let me show you how to set it up for everything you're going to need in your reaction video. I can promise you that nearly every reaction video that you see on YouTube is created in this exact way. If you set up OBS properly, you're going to be able to create amazing looking reaction videos that will need almost no editing at all. That sure makes content creation a lot easier. So what sort of things are we gonna need for a reaction video? Well, the first scene is probably going to be just a talking head scene that you can introduce what you're going to actually react to. So for this, let's just call this one main. And what you'll need in here is probably a camera. So we'll click plus and we're gonna just go ahead and add a camera. So we'll just go to video capture device and we can call this cam and click okay. And you use this drop down to select which camera you want. It already selected my camera as you can see. And you really don't have to do anything other than come down here, select use custom audio device and then Go ahead and select the audio device that you want to use. In my case, it's going to be this one right here. Then click OK. And you can see now we have a camera and we have an audio device right here. We can adjust the volume on this audio device. We can also go into advanced audio properties by clicking this. And yours is going to look like this, just so you know. Uh, and then we can go into advanced audio properties and uh, go to this screen right here. And this is going to allow you to change a couple of the settings. You can adjust the balance of your audio, uh, change the sync offset, which means if your voice is not lining up with the video, you can modify that. That's something that can happen if you're using USB devices uh, for your camera or your microphone. And then uh, you can change how you do your monitoring. What monitoring means is that you can actually hear what it is that you're doing. So most people are not going to actually want to monitor their own voice. However, you're going to want to monitor the actual video or whatever it is that you are going to react to. So this is going to come in handy later on and I will show you. Uh, here, what I'm going to do is go ahead and just adjust the view. And you can do that just by clicking on these red dots here and stretching it out and there we go. So now we have the exact image that we might want. We're all set up, we have our main scene set up. So let's figure out what we want to do for our second scene, we'll click the plus and we'll go ahead and call this one react because this is going to be our react scene. And now we have a, another blank scene. There are a couple of different ways that you can do this. If you're going to be reacting to a video, you can download the video and physically have it on your computer. If you're going to be reacting to a bunch of different tweets or something like that, you can set them up in your browser and just select those. So let's go over how to display something in our browser first and react to that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to add the exact same camera that we had in the other one because you're going to want some sort of a actual reaction, not just a vocal one, but a facial one. So in this particular case, we're not going to really want to take up the whole screen. So we can just go ahead and do this and we can move us somewhere else. In fact, we could go even smaller. We really only need our reaction to what's going on. So we could go ahead and move this over onto uh, the side there. And all I'm doing is holding down the alt key to crop this and then just selecting the red dot and moving. And there you go. That's what the green line is. It means it's cropped. And so over here is where we're going to want to display I don't know, Twitter or whatever it is that we want to kind of review. So what I'm going to do is click the plus and I'm going to do a display capture. Now there are a lot of different ways that you can do this and I'll show you all of them, but we're gonna start with a display capture and I'm just going to go ahead and click okay. And now we just need to select the display that we wanna bring up. And so I'm gonna go with this one right here and click okay. And what we could do is I'm just gonna stretch this out all the way like that. And then all I have to do is bring this below and there you go. So now we can see our capture. And we'll, what we could do is bring it over here, kind of center it up, and maybe we don't want all this blank space. Well, that's where some sort of a Photoshop editing or something like that could come in, where we can create a banner up here that represents the channel and some colors, but you can actually do it in here as well. Let's go and select color source, click OK. And the colors that I like to use are blue and green, or blue and yellow. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna select this color here. Click OK. And we're gonna just drop this color source all the way down. So now you can see it behind there. 
And then what we can do is click the plus and we can add some text and we can put in text for whatever it happens to be that we're going to be looking at. So let's find any sort of text that we might want to use. We'll use this one here. And if you want to see what it looks like, all you have to do is type in here. You can see it gives you an example right here, but let's call this one, uh, I don't know. You're gonna, you're gonna have to figure out exactly what you want uh, for your text as it pertains to whatever it is that you might be reacting to. But let's just put reaction zone and what I'm gonna do is go ahead and scroll down here and I want to add a little bit more interest to this text so I'm gonna put some outline on it and we'll bump up our outline a little bit so we can see it we're gonna have to change the color to black for our outline that'll make it a lot more visible and then we'll just give it a little more outline there. We could go and change the text color if we want, and that's right here, color. You can select any text color that you want, and then there you go, you can see that it changes the text color. Pretty simple stuff. There are lots of different things that you can do in here to change the way that your text looks and even add gradients to it. So you can experiment with that. You can use any font that you have downloaded on your machine, and we'll just shrink this up and put it right here. Now, chances are, if this was something I was setting up, I would use my actual colors. So in this particular case, it would be probably something like that. And there we go. So now we have that in there. Maybe we don't want this to be quite so bright. So what I would probably do is go ahead and click the plus and I would add another color source. And we're gonna do this color source more of a dark gray like that and click OK. And what I'm going to do is just use the alt key, crop this up a little bit. And I just want this to kind of be down here on the bottom. And then I just drop this color source down here. So it's a little above that. Then we've got this gray area down here. And you could put other text down here at the bottom. You could do whatever you want. The point is now I can react to anything in this window. So if I wanted to do any sort of a YouTube video reaction, I can just bring up a YouTube video. So that's pretty simple. I just go in here. I could select any video that I want. And there we go. We could play this video and react to it. But you're noticing that down below, we don't have any audio for this video. Let's go ahead and add some audio. So what I'm gonna do is click the plus and I'm gonna go to our audio output capture. Audio output capture is going to capture wherever you would normally listen to that audio. So if you're going to do a live reaction video, you're gonna notice most of the people that you see doing it are always wearing headphones. And the reason why they're wearing headphones is because they can't have the audio for the clip playing over their speakers because it will feed back into their microphone. So you're going to have to get yourself a set of headphones and then you're going to wanna to change your audio output on your computer so it comes out of your headphones. So we're gonna go right here and we're gonna go and we're going to select our headphones. In my case, it is the Zone Wireless headphones. There we go. And so now we've got our audio output capture. We're gonna click OK and we're going to select the audio. And in our case, as we just said, it's going to be the Zone Wireless Plus. That is where we are going to listen to the audio for the video. So it's right here. And all we have to do is click OK. And there we go. So now you can see we got our audio output capture. And if I click play on the video, there you can see it's capturing the audio from the video. We can adjust the volume and all that stuff and we can click in that window to pause it or whatever we wanna do. We can also go up here and maximize it so we're getting the full video. And now we can easily react to whatever's going on in this window. And this works the same if you're going to use just a web page that you wanna talk about. Someone wrote an article and you find it interesting and you wanna to react to what's said in the article or give your commentary, you can put it up over here. It's really easy. Now this is doing it using our display capture, but maybe we don't wanna do it that way. Let's go ahead and delete our display capture. We can do it by window capture instead. So if we select window capture and then all we have to do is drop down and find the window that we're talking about. 
So in my case, um, we're capturing the Chrome window right there. So uh, if you wanted to capture Discord or something else, you could select that in here as well. But we just want to capture the Chrome window. So boom, we can do that. Do we want to capture the cursor when it goes over the Chrome window? You can say yes or no. It's up to you what you want to do right there. And that's all we really need to do. Now we can slide this over in here and it's basically exactly the same as what we had before. It's just a different way to capture the actual screen. And you can play it the same way we did before. There we go. So now I can react to whatever's over here. I can play, I can pause, I can do whatever. Now if you're going to do strictly video reactions, the best course of action is probably just to download the video that you want to react to because you get more options. For example, let's go ahead and remove this window capture. And I'm going to go ahead and remove. And let's say we were going to do a reaction to a video that we found online or we like, or maybe a movie, who knows? Well, what we can do is go and load a media source and click OK. And then we're gonna just find the video file that we wanna react to. In this case, I'm gonna just use a video game recording that I have right here and we don't have to loop it or anything we'll just click OK and the first thing I'm gonna do is go up here and pause it and then I'm gonna resize it to the size that I want to use of course this is just video game footage of the Witcher now if you notice over here there's like a little gap and so I can use the arrow keys to move it around and then stretch it out over here on this side to make sure that it reaches the whole thing so there we go so now we have the video. So once our media source is in here, we can select it and we can play and pause and do all that stuff with it. But when we do that, we see it's playing here, but we don't have any way to actually listen to that. All that's doing is broadcasting that out to the recording. So if we want to listen to it and do a live reaction of, you know, show people what we think, we're going to have to monitor that. In order to do that, you're going to click here, go to Advanced Audio Properties. You're going to select your media source and you're going to go to Monitor and Output. And there we go. Now we're going to have to change a setting here in order to be able to monitor and output. So we're going to go into Settings and we're going to go to our audio and we want to go to Advanced right here where it says Monitoring Device. And we just want to select the monitoring device we're going to use. In this case, it would be our headphones. So we're going to go ahead and select our Zone Wireless Headphones right here. And we want to apply and click OK. So now when we turn that on, we can see a problem. Both our audio output capture and our media source is playing the same audio. So in other words, if you want to react to a video source that you downloaded that you want to show people, well, it automatically adds that audio in there. So this audio output capture is going to double that audio and we don't want that. So all we have to do is select it, right click it and remove it. And there you go. You're gonna need the audio output capture if you wanna capture something from a Chrome tab or something like that. But you don't need that if you're just going to add a video directly in here like a media source. That's automatically gonna be added. All you need to do then is go ahead and make sure that you change the media source advanced audio properties to monitor and output so that you're going to be able to hear them in your headphones. And now we can just play it. And then if we get to something that we want to make a comment about, we can click that pause button and react to whatever's going on in the video. And of course, all of this is really simple to control. And there are so many different ways that you can set this up so that it will look absolutely fantastic and be just exactly what you're looking for. The last thing I want to touch on is when you switch from main to react. Now, I'm going to talk about the philosophy of actually creating these videos, but if you wanted to create it all as a video where you start here and you introduce what you're going to react to, and then you just go right into the reaction and you start playing the video, you can easily do that with no editing at all, and you can even add cool transitions to that by using your scene transitions. Right now we have a fade transition, so when I go back and forth like this, you can see it fading back and forth. But we can do other transitions there as well. We can go ahead and drop this down and do a cut, and it will just cut in between the two scenes. And you can see that this plays automatically when we get to this scene. We can actually fix that problem by going into properties 
and we can go restart playback when source becomes active we can uncheck that so there we go so now when we go to main and we go back it's going to be in the same spot that it was so if the video is right here and we go to main and we come back the video is still right there obviously that's important if you're going to be doing a reaction where you just want to have a up close and personal maybe you switch to this scene and talk directly to the audience and then you switch back and you go back to your reacting. You can also add much more dynamic and interesting transitions here by going to the Luma White. These are all built right in. And you can select from bunches of different Luma Wipes. You can see what some of these look like. There we go. And so you can create all kinds of cool transitions. That's the clock one. And if you wanna take a look at how this looks, you just have it selected and we can go like that. And there we go. So now we have that transition. Maybe that moves too fast. We want it a little slower. We'll just put 800 milliseconds in there instead of 300. And now we get a much slower wipe back and forth. Looks pretty awesome. And this allows you to create an entire video without really having to do any editing. You start the video right here. You say what you need to say to introduce the clip or the subject or topics that you're gonna wanna talk about. And then you just flip over here and there you go. So you're all set up to do any sort of reaction video that you want to do on your own bespoke page with your own bespoke colors. And you can even eliminate almost all of the editing if you really want to. Now everything is totally set up and all we have to do is record our reaction video. Let me show you the recording settings that I use and share some of the recording strategies that are gonna make creating your video so much easier. Once you have your reaction scenes and everything all set up, we're going to need to learn how to record using the software. So first let's set it up. We're gonna go down here into settings and we're gonna go into output and it's gonna be set up as simple. We're just gonna drop this down and go to advanced and then we wanna to go to the recording tab. And this is pretty simple. We could just leave it in standard and we're gonna go here and select where we want our recordings to go. So we could just select a directory where we want to record and select the folder, click apply, and there we go. Now we want to go ahead and set what style of video we want to record. Now I always select MP4 because it is the easiest thing to actually edit. So if we select that, you can see you get a warning message down here. And what that warning message is telling us is that if for some reason OBS crashes or something like that, it may not be able to save those videos properly so that you know they may become unusable i've never had this problem so i don't really worry about it but just so you know that warning is there because of that then we need to select our video encoder now if you're using a reasonably decent modern machine which i definitely recommend that you should if you're going to be recording you probably have an nvidia graphics card in which case you have nvic encoding and you can use HEVC or H.264. And uh, you can see there are some other options here as well, AV1 and all that sort of stuff. And those are based on the graphics cards and the encoders that I physically have on the machine. But it is quite possible that you don't have access to any of this and you might just have X264 if you don't have a bespoke graphics card on your machine. Let's first start out with setting up NVIC if you have an NVIDIA graphics card. Ideally, you're gonna to wanna to use the NVIC codec. If you have a 40 series graphics card, you may wanna use AV1. I use H.264 because I have a 30 series graphics card and the audio encoder doesn't need to be changed or anything like that. We do not wanna rescale the output. We wanna leave it. Um, in order to check on our output, we wanna go over here to video real quick. Just make sure that these two are what you wanna be recording in. So if you're gonna record in 1920 by 1080, make sure these are both 1920 by 1080. If you have a camera source that will do 4K, you can actually set this up and just put in your 4K numbers or whatever you want, you know? It's very simple and then just make sure that they both are that 4K number and you're all set. I have a profile where I record in 4K and that is easily doable. You're gonna to wanna to put your frames per second right here for a reaction video or something like that. There really isn't any reason not to just record in 30 frames per second. So we can click apply and we'll go back into our output. So now we wanna come down here and you don't really need to change any of this stuff. The next thing we wanna do is set up our encoder. Now remember, this is the NVIC encoding settings. 
I do CBR, which is a constant bit rate. It does create bigger files, so you could do CQP, and you know it records smaller files, but I just like to know that I'm getting the best quality that I can. So I do CBR, and then I do 60,000 kilobits per second. Nothing else really needs to be changed at all. I could just click apply, and I'm ready to record to this directory with these settings. If you don't have a bespoke graphics card or something like that, and all you have access to is 264, you're gonna probably have to play around with it a little bit more because you wanna make sure that you're getting the quality you desire without overtaxing your computer. So you're still gonna use a constant bit rate and you're still going to start your bit rate at 60,000. And when you get down here, this is the presets for the quality that you're looking for. So very fast is actually gonna give you pretty good quality. The, the, the farther you get down here to placebo, the more taxing it's going to be on your computer. So it starts out at very fast, but you could go uh, to super fast or ultra fast if your machine is being taxed by very fast. Uh, you could go profile, usually high is the one that I would select, and there's, not, there's nothing to really change in the tune. Once you do that, you can click apply, record something, see how it works, see if you're getting the results that you're looking for, and if not, you can adjust your bit rate down a little bit, or you could start adjusting this right here to see what you get. Now, I highly recommend that if you're going to be doing reaction videos or recording anything with OBS, that you get yourself a machine that has a bespoke graphics card with a video encoder so that you can use something like the NVIC encoder. It just makes life so much easier and you won't have to worry about the quality of your recording because it has a chip on it that does the encoding for you. So we can just click apply and we're all set up and ready to record our videos. And once you're set up and ready to record your videos, you're just going to go over here and click start recording and boom, you go, you introduce your video, then you switch over to react and you can react to your video and you can play, pause, and do whatever you wanna do with that video, and then you can click stop recording. Once you stop recording, you're going to have a file that looks just like this right here. It's just gonna be the timestamp and date for that file, and that's what they're gonna look like. You can rename them to whatever you want. So what is the best way to record something like this? If you are the type of person that really has the ability to plan out what you wanna say, or you're very comfortable in front of the camera, you might be able to get away with just simply starting the record, filming your intro, and then moving right over here to your reaction and filming that as well. And then you can flip right back over here and close out your video. And you can do that all in one take. Now, my personal philosophy, I film my intros, I film my closes totally separately when I do all my tutorial videos. Then I film the tutorial stuff completely separately and we just bump those clips together and we add transitions and we add a little bit of flair. None of that transitional stuff or flair is even remotely anything that you need to worry about as a beginning video creator. Really, you just wanna get the content out there. However, in order to progress as a video creator, you're gonna to wanna to learn a little bit about your editing software. There are a bunch of free options like CapCut if you're looking for something much more simple, or DaVinci Resolve if you're looking for a professional editing software. And there's so many videos out there on just the basics of editing that it really makes sense to try to put out the best quality of content you can. And to do that, sometimes you're going to do multiple takes on an intro and multiple takes on a close, and then you're just going to get your pure reaction from the video and then you can clip those together any way you want add transitions add funny sounds whatever you want but the editing is really simple because the way that you record it is just so easy so really obs can make it easy for you to create almost edit free reaction videos essentially you need a camera a microphone and a reasonably decent computer now personally I would recommend that you use this with a two monitor setup. Doesn't mean you can't do it on a laptop, it just means that you wanna have a second monitor plugged into that laptop because it makes it so much easier. Then you have one monitor you're going to be using for OBS and a second monitor where you're going to have the video or whatever tabs in Chrome that you're looking to talk about. That way 
you really don't have to worry about juggling and moving screens around or anything like that. Can all of this be done with one monitor? Absolutely. But it's a heck of a lot harder and it's more confusing and it's just so much easier with a second monitor. And let's be honest, these days you could get a second monitor. You probably have one laying around as an old TV that will take an HDMI input and your laptop probably has HDMI output. It's the matter of buying a stinking cable and plugging it into an old TV. It's really not all that hard. Two of the three monitors that I have in my setup are just old crappy TVs that people were throwing away. So they don't have to be anything special and you can use just about any sort of monitoring device, but it does make your life a whole heck of a lot easier. Now you have all the knowledge that you need to record reaction videos. Editing these will be a breeze with almost no editing skill required to make them look amazing. You can get the editing skill that you need from any editing basics video and there are thousands of them on YouTube. And you can even get free editing software like DaVinci Resolve that's really easy to use. There are also amazing free effects that you can add to OBS to create even better scenes. To learn about a few of those, you should check this video out. Now, maybe you have a question about anything I showed you today. Well, you can always come and ask me personally on my live stream. It's every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I look forward to seeing you there. And if you're always looking for tools, tips, and tricks to help make you a better live streamer or YouTuber, subscribe to the channel. My name is Michael Fire Jr. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.